yesterday we practiced one step equations as kind of a review for what is coming today learning how to solve two step equations some of you may know how to do some of the simpler ones but it may get a little bit more complicated as the lesson goes on so i am going to share my screen with you and once again please be patient there we go all right so we will be solving some two-step equations um, basically what you're trying to do as with any algebraic equation is to get the variable the letter on one side of the equal sign and everything else to the other side doesn't matter which side it is okay so let's look at this kind of really basic two-step equation we have 6z, so 6 times z, it's a multiplication, and then we have a subtraction in there. That's why we call it a two-step. We have two different operations that we have to undo, okay? So what we have to kind of think about is almost the reverse of PEMDAS. Um, when you have either multiplication and division and uh, subtraction or addition, we wanna undo this the adding or subtracting first okay so in, in this case we have a minus three so we're gonna do an a plus three on both sides to get rid of that minus three so this drops off so we're left with six z equals three and then we are going to we see that as six times z equals three. So in order to undo the multiplication, we are going to divide by six. I'm just gonna move this up over here now. Um, so we have the six and six divided by six kind of disappear. And then we're left with z equals three six. And we always put it in simplest form. We know that three six is one half. Let's do another one. It looks a little bit different. It's still only two different operations. We have a multiplication and we have a subtraction right here. So we are going to get rid of this number first. We're gonna leave this multiplication on this side for right now. This is where it comes, in, where it's a little bit wonky because this minus sign confuses some people okay what we want to do is get rid of this 15 so we have to determine is this 15 positive or negative were we adding or subtracting this to begin with and we can see that 15 is a positive number if we were to rewrite this side if we were to flip it around we could say it is negative 3x plus 15 that would be a similar way to write this. If that helps you out, that's great. This minus sign, remember that subtraction sign, really goes with that negative, that three X. So it's like a negative three X. So this is a positive 15. So we are going to subtract 15 from both sides. This drops off. We are left here with negative three X. Don't forget that negative sign. That doesn't just disappear. And then negative six minus 15. Look at that. We are subtracting and adding negative numbers. Look at that. It always comes back to us. So negative six, we're already at a negative six, and we're going to move 15 more in the negative direction. So that brings us to negative 21. Now to get rid of the negative three, negative three times x. So we're going to divide by a negative three. This drops off the negative, both the negative, both negative threes. So I'm going to move this up over here. X equals negative 21 divided by negative three. So a negative divided by a negative is positive. So we have a positive seven. All right, the next one, m divided by five plus six equals nine. So we've got a division and we've got addition. So we're gonna get rid of this addition first. So we're gonna subtract six. 
on both sides. The sixes drop off here. We're left with m divided by five, and then nine minus six is three. In order to get rid of the division, we're gonna multiply this side by five and this side by five. This drops off, we're left with m equals 15. Now the next one. Take a look at that. T minus three all over two equals 75. Don't let that freak you out. So where I said we're gonna have to work kind of backwards in PEMDAS, be careful when we have an addition or subtraction that is completely in a numerator. What we wanna do is kind of think of this as parentheses. We gotta keep this together because this whole quantity is divided by two. So just follow these steps and you won't go wrong. So here, this whole fraction, just pretend this numerator is some other thing, okay? So you have a thing over two equals 75. So that means we are gonna multiply both sides by 75, or by, by two, excuse me. Look what happens to this left side. The two and the two cancel out. I am left only with t minus three. If you need to rewatch that, please do. And then 75 times two is 150. Then we're gonna add three to both sides because that's a minus sign. This falls off, t equals 153, okay? You're gonna have to practice a few of these. These, these are not easy to get used to, but just be very careful when you have a variable and an addition or a subtraction in a numerator, make sure you take care of that denominator first. All right, and then finally, fractions. We're gonna have some with fractions, of course. Okay, so we have negative one equals five eighths x plus three eighths. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first get rid of this plus three eighths. We're gonna subtract three eighths from both sides. Okay, so we know this side drops off, that becomes easy, and it's only 5 eighths x. Now here, how are we gonna do this? First of all, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. In order to subtract or add or anything with fractions, we need to get things in common denominators. So negative one, okay, let, me, let me write it out this way, negative one minus 3 eighths. Let's look at it over here. So this negative one, we need to get that in the form of eighths. So negative one can be written as negative eight eighths minus three eighths. Now here's, again, we're subtracting a number from a negative number. So we have to be, know what we're doing, okay? So think in your head, where is negative eight eighths on the number line, okay? That's negative. And then we're gonna move another three eighths beyond that. Okay, so what this actually is, is negative 11 eighths. All right, so now negative 11 eighths equals 5 eighths x. So we have a multiplication right here, 5 eighths times x. To get rid of multiplication, we divide, correct? Okay, so technically we are going to divide by five eighths, right? I wrote that very lightly. But when you divide by a fraction, remember back probably a month ago, when you divide by a fraction, you are going to multiply by its reciprocal. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. So you can write divided by five eighths on both sides, that's fine, but you're gonna have to do this weird work anyway. So what we're gonna do is we are going to multiply by eight fifths. We've done this before. When you divide by a fraction, 
you multiply by its reciprocal. This drops off to be a one. So we're left with X over here. Now we have eight fifths times negative 11 eighths. Then we can kind of cross those off because those are gonna divide out. So we are left with negative 11 fifths. You can leave that as an improper fraction, or if you wanted to change that to negative two and one fifth, that is absolutely fine. Practice, practice, practice. You will do this, you will get this. I have faith in you. <laughs>